I am Dr. Luis de la Torre, Assistant Director of the International Center for Colorectal and Urogenital Care at Children's Hospital, Colorado. The patient with Hispron is born without ganglion cells in the rectum. Thus, it is a congenital problem. All the patients with Hispron cannot relax the rectum, resulting in a blockage. The patient cannot move out gas and meconium. Usually, the newborn passes meconium in the first 24 hours of life. If this meconium does not occur, we must suspect Hispron disease. Also, it is mandatory to suspect Hispron in the newborn and young infant with abdominal distension, vomiting, which is not having regular bowel movements. These symptoms are frequently confused with constipation, food allergy, or food intolerance. If this misdiagnosis is established, the patient may develop a life-threatening condition named colitis. The majority of patients with Hispron does not have other clinical features. Then, the clinical history is enough to suspect this condition. It is essential to confirm or rule out Hispron disease as soon as possible in the newborn and young infant with an early onset of constipation. Furthermore, if it's associated with vomiting and abdominal distension. Once the suspicion is supported, the patient needs an abdominal x-ray and a rectal biopsy. The x-ray is needed to evaluate the dilation of the large bowel and helps to assess the severity of the obstruction, also the severity of the colitis. In many cases, our preference is to start medical management with rectal irrigation before the biopsy. Once the baby is in good clinical and radiological conditions, we proceed to obtain the rectal biopsy with a special device. In 24, 48 hours, our expert pathologists informed the result of this study. If pathologists verified the absence of ganglion cells and observed associated nerve hypertrophy, the diagnosis of Hispron is confirmed. Normally, we continue the medical management with irrigations in these babies until the patient has a city yellow stool, is eating well, and is gaining weight. This clinical feature means that the baby does not have colitis, in, and it is the proper time to perform the contrast enema. This radiologic study is performed with a unique technique for Hispron. The goal of the contrast enema is to demonstrate the spastic rectum or rectosigmoid followed by a dilated large bowel. We call this area the transitional zone. We can estimate the length of the segment with Hispron disease and plan the type of operation. The contrast enema should be done when the patient does not have colitis. This condition allows demonstrating the transitional zone. The contrast enema is not useful if the patient is suffering colitis, even with subclinical colitis. At the International Center for Colorectal and Urogenital Care, we are confident that the diagnosis of Hirschsprung disease involves the histopathological demonstration of absence of ganglion cells in the rectum and the length of the aganglionosis. This comprehensive diagnosis allows planning the best surgical procedure to repair this condition in every patient.